Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. I've been uh, playing around with the wood filament a bit more since the last video, so I'm going to go cover everything that I've learned, uh, go over some of the things that I like and dislike about it, kind of show you some comparisons. Here I finished these up a little bit. Uh, they could be better, um, but overall they're not bad, but I will go over some of the mistakes I made, kind of talk about uh, what the filament can do, uh, some of the limitations, things like that. Um, I also printed out a, another test bowl. Uh, this is untouched straight off the printer, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And then I have a couple of wood samples here that I'm going to show you as well in comparison. So before we go ahead and jump into this, uh, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. Also, uh, I know this is slightly off topic related to the wood filament, but I've been thinking about getting a resin printer. Uh, I was just curious if you guys would like to see videos on that. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards it, uh, so I just wanted to get everybody's feedback before I spent the money on it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. All right, guys, here's the wood bowl from last time. I sanded it back down a little bit and then reapplied three more uh, coats of uh, stain and then put a light clear coat of polyurethane over it for a protectant and kind of like a gloss. Uh, the bowl turned out pretty good. Uh, it could definitely be used for a decoration. Uh, I wanted to make a note here that uh, if you're using really coarse sandpaper, uh, if you're not careful, you could end up getting uh, grooves like um, this. Sorry, it'll be, let me turn this around. You could end up getting grooves like this right here. Um, while you can see it, um, it's not really distracting. It kind of gives it more of the wood look. Uh, so that's, I guess, not awful. But if you're just uh, using really coarse sandpaper, I think that was a 60 grit. I went down a little bit too deep with it when I was trying to just remove some of the excess filament and wasn't doing it consistently, so it ended up causing some scratches. So keep that in mind. Um, you kind of got a little bit of a grain look here, um, just from the way that the sanding and everything turned out, but it doesn't quite look like real grain. Um, Here's a little bit of a little, uh, was, I guess, a cutoff of walnut. It's black walnut, white walnut, and uh, a red oak. Uh, as you can see, the grains are all going different directions and they really stand out. You're not going to quite get that with wood filament. There'd be no way to really account for that. Um, so I guess it's for normal things, it's not awful. Just keep that in mind. Uh, it's not going to be a direct one to one replacement. All right, the next piece I wanted to show you, I brought this up last time, it was completely unfinished, uh, was this little cherry bowl. Um, I put more of a light coat of the stain on here, did a couple coats, but I made it really light. And then I used spray clear paint on the top. Um, so it wasn't really a polyurethane, but it's a light protectant. It's easier because of these grooves. You can't really get into those uh, with the polyurethane if you're using a brush or anything like that. It'd be quite challenging. So in a case like this, the spray works better. You just gotta be careful not to overspray because you can get bubbles, uh, which it's nothing to do with the filament. It's just the um, clear coat spray to begin with. Uh, but I had a couple here that I sanded out. I decided to leave it how it was because um, when I sanded it out, it kind of gave it more of a, um, I guess, a texture. So it wasn't consistent all the way around just to kind of give it more of that wood fill. That's what I also did in the center here. You can see that uh, it still has some of the lines. Uh, that was just the buildup from when it was printing. I left that in place. I sanded it down so it was smooth, but you still had the texture there, just so it had some dimension to it. I thought it would look quite plain or boring if you didn't do that. Uh, at least it, now it kind of looks like it was a knot. Um, so overall, I think this turned out pretty cool. I'll just use it for a decoration around the house. I'll probably put a couple things in it, maybe some keys or something, send it to bowl. The next piece I wanted to show you, I mentioned last time that I wanted to print something at a higher resolution um, than the 0.2, which I did for both of those, which is standard print. So I went with the super high quality uh, profile on Cura, which is 0.12. Um, I was thinking that going that route, you would have less to sand, uh, which is true. Um, with the exception at the bottom, there's a lot of extra debris and stuff. I think all of that will come out, but is basically trading one set of problems for another. 
I don't know if this would end up being easier to sand or not. Once it got past this part, it seemed to clear up quite a bit. It's just getting there. There was a lot of issues at this resolution. Um, I think I'll print another bowl to see if it was just a bad print. Uh, but I uh, nothing's changed on the printer since when I printed the other one and I did not have an issue like this at all at the point two resolution. Uh, but it looks like most of this is just higher so it's really just sticking out so I think that'll just clean up quite easily so there won't be any issues there. So it might actually be easier to sand this than it was to sand the other one which was the main thing. Uh, going back to this cherry bowl really quick. Um, I wanted to use this as a couple examples uh, because it has these grooves. I did not sand in between here and the uh, stain did not stick to it. So if you're wanting to stain something that came straight off of the printer, you're not going to be able to. It wouldn't stick. Uh, basically, I would put the stain on there. It would just stay in a liquid form and I can do this and it just rolled in there like it was water. So it's not going to stick to an unsanded surf surface. Um, another thing to point out is if you're going with a really high um, or fine sandpaper, so I finished this off with a 400 grit, and with that, it made it harder for the stain to actually um, absorb. So I'm assuming that the wood fibers need it to be a little bit more coarse for the stain to get into it. Uh, so probably sticking with the 200 or 220 uh, is probably going to be your best bet for your finishing layer. Don't try to take it to 400 because you are going to have some issues uh, with getting the stain to stick and getting it as dark as you want. Because uh, this is the same uh, as this, so and this is a lot darker than this. I did not take the 400 to this. This was a, the two. Uh, I think it was a 220. All right, then I had a couple more things I kind of want to show you here. Um, here we have the two blocks that I printed. Um, these are just, this was straight off the printer untouched. This one I sanded down and then stained one side of it, did not put a coat on it. Just wanted to show you these compared to um, like real wood here. So this is uh, white oak and this is purple heart. You can see these are both very, very hard woods, purple heart being the harder of the two. Um, but you can see how it has the nice grains, texture, and all of that. You're not going to get that with um, a printed material. You can see here it kind of has some resemblance of grains. Uh, really, that's just the sandpaper. So I, w I went a little bit deeper in some spots just to kind of give it some sort of texture. Um, you just got to be careful with that because if you do it wrong, you could end up with the scratch. It just looks like scratches, like there are a couple on the bowl. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that some of the glue ups like this and then your direct grain comparison and stuff like that, they're not going to be the same. And then it would be difficult to try to go between colors and such if you're trying to make, um, like here, I've got a cutting board I made a while back. Um, as you can see here, it's got the uh, oak, walnut, the black walnut, and uh, purple heart. Uh, doing something like this would be incredibly difficult with a wood filament. You would have to print each piece out, then try to stain them to different colors, then bring them together and sand it, and it's not going to turn out. So if you're trying to mix colors and stuff like that, uh, you're going to have some issues. Uh, but if you're just trying to print little decorative bowls and things for around the house, um, I do think it's a good alternative. But just understand the limitations and that it's a well, I would say fake material, but it's PLA, but it's a fake wood. It's got real fibers in it, but that only goes so far. So if you're really looking for more of the textures and stuff like that, that'll come with a natural wood, you're going to want to use wood. If you're looking for something that'll just look nice and decorative and look like wood, um, the wood filament is definitely a good substitute. So I'll link to uh, the filament that I use here along with the sandpaper, the clear coat, and the polyurethane that I use as well in the description below. And if you have any questions or feedback, uh, please leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. As you can see, the wood filament can be pretty cool. There is some limitations with it. It doesn't exactly uh, mimic real wood, um, but it does 
provide a nice little substitute. So if you're trying to just print like little bowls like this or uh, little action figures or things like that that look like wood, uh, it's a good alternative. Um, some of this stuff, well, the bowl wouldn't be too difficult if you have the right tool, but if you wanted to print like a group figure as an example, um, unless you're really good at wood carving, that's not going to be viable for most people. Uh, so you can print those out. They do turn out pretty well. Um, actually, I should probably print a couple. <laughs> Kids would love them. But yeah, um, there are, I mean, the filament is neat. It's a little bit more expensive than standard PLA uh, because it has those wood grains in it. Uh, but it does give it some of the characteristics of wood. It does hold stain, um, but not as well as normal wood like we went over in the video. And then you do have to sand it. There's a lot of work that comes with that, um, mostly by hand, unless you are really careful with a power sander. So here, like I showed you earlier in the video, um, there is a nick, uh, where is it, right here, where I was trying to sand this with a little Dremel sander. And... I accidentally pushed too hard and it went straight in. I was able to buff it out mostly, but you just gotta be careful. Where with standard wood, um, a slight mistake like that, you wouldn't even notice it because it takes a lot more effort to remove the actual uh, wood. So just food for thought. Um, if you're looking for something that looks like wood and kind of uh, is for decoration, uh, go ahead and give this a shot. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.